I've spent a month of work on rewriting my binding generator from scratch. This binding generator takes C headers and makes bindings for Odin from them so that you can use your C libraries in Odin without having to handwrite the bindings. If you go to the URL of the repository, which I will link in the description, there is a little release thingy here where it says what I have done, there's some new features, some bugs fixed, and some other things. What I thought we would look at here is some improvements I did to the Raylib example that showcases how you can do like nice bindings using this generator. Let's look at how my generated Raylib bindings look and compare them here to the Raylib C header file. So for example, here we have the rectangle struct here and here we have the same thing in the Raylib header. And as we can see, like it has brought along all the comments on all the fields and the comments before here and such. A slightly bigger struct example is the mesh here uh, where we have like these groups of things that are grouped by the leading comment and stuff like that and it's all you know brought over nicely with all the comments in there and it's nice to look at and that's one of the things i really want to do with this generator to not just it should generate bindings that uh, are are easy to use out of the box but they're also easy to look at and you should be able to look at the bindings for documentation not be forced to go look at the original c header for documentation what the binding generator does is that it takes the C headers and then a, there is also a configuration file called bindgen.sjson uh, and this one can be used to tweak the behavior of the generator uh, as it is uh, making your bindings. So this is the one for my Raylib uh, bindings here. Uh, as we can see like there is some bit setify stuff going on here. What I will do is that if we look at config flags here it will make this bit set here and also make sure that the values of each field has the correct value because it needs to use a log2 mathematical procedure to to to, to translate it so so it mat matches which bit it's supposed uh, to sort of uh, hit in the bit set you can also do type overrides. This is one important thing because if we look in the at color in the original Raylib thing here, we have like this is a struct, but in our case, color is a distinct array of four U8s. These are uh, memory-wise identical, but in in Odin you can just use a an array of four things or less, uh, and you can use RGBA. Uh, selectors to like swizzle in it and everything so it's much nicer to have this than have this which is why we tell it in the generator config to replace color with this thing so that's just a sort of hard-coded replacement other things that might get a bit tricky when generating bindings is that for example in this image struct here there is a format field that's just an integer but it's it says in the comment that it is supposed to be a pixel format type. So in the bindings here, it is of pixel format type. And what I've done there is simply that there is a struct field override that says image.format is pixel format. So that it sort of overrides the type of that one. And then, you know, there's stuff like uh, arrays in uh, C. So for example, you have this rectangle rex here. This is supposed to be seen as an array of rectangles. But in C, you often use just a pointer as an array, like a pointer plus a size is an array. Uh, and in order to map that nicely, in bindings, you tend to use a multi-pointer in Odin. So, so the default would be that it will output it like this, right? But there is an override here on this field, uh, font.rex. It just says multi-pointer that this thing here will replace the, the, the normal pointer with a multi-pointer. Uh, the difference between the multi-pointer and the normal pointer is that we can index the pointer. So in our Odin code, when we use these Rayleigh really bindings, we can write like font.rex and we can use an index operator to, to fetch different uh, things from different places. With a normal pointer in Odin, you can't just index it because in Odin, you don't use pointers as arrays that often. It's only when we're interacting with this kind of C code that we tend to use uh, pointers uh, as arrays a bit more and in that case we want to say that they are multi-pointers to get that indexing functionality. Other things I added because so so what I've done here is I looked at the, the, the bindings in the vendor folder there are handwritten bindings 
in the Rayleigh vendor folder and I try to make my new these generated bindings as close to those as possible and the nice thing about it is that you know if a new gen Rayleigh version is released we can I can just generate new bindings for it uh, and and see if uh, anything changed like it's easy when you handwrite them when you update to a new version to to miss maybe some changes some removed things etc so one thing that I saw in the in the official bindings was that there was this uh, tag here that tells uh, Odin how to print this field if it's printed you know you do like fmt.print uh, with this field here so this controls how it's printed so I used to add it in a struct field tag so you can say bone info.name and you can add this in so it would put that there just like with the structs where you can override the, the, the type of a field or if it should be a multipoint or not you can do the same thing with procedure types so you have stuff like uh, set config flags here for example set config flags of flags config flags without this I think it's just an integer or something but well, we can look set config this is the original one yes it's just unsigned int flags so we do that so that it's nicer to use these bindings uh, so that you can just pass this config flags bit set straight into it and when you're making your bindings like you can just start out with you know have the generator generate something and then you can use them and as you notice that things are a bit off you can go in and modify the, the generator config and add stuff so what i've done here is i've gone through you know i compared with the official ones in vendor and i added all the these are all the procedure parameter overrides i needed uh, for the whole library uh, so a lot of it is just multi-pointer things as you can see and the last thing that makes them almost identical to the ones in the vendor folder is that if you look inside the input folder here there is a raylib.h and then there's a raylibfooter.odin because if we look down here I, I've I've copied and referenced where I got them from down here somewhere here here it says this footer comes from vendor Rayleigh, which shows how to manually add extra things to your bindings the footer is added uh, to this file from input Rayleigh footer automatically so what this means is that all the stuff fro from here and downwards comes from this footer file and you know sometimes when you're making bindings you you've made all your bindings but then you need to hard code a few procedures yourself maybe you need to re-implement them in Odin or something so if you look here it actually removes these three procedures and those are actually re-implemented here and this is done by ginger bill when he did the vendor like th this code i took from the vendor uh, Rayleigh bindings uh, and put them in this footer file so i can show you the footer file here the footer file just looks like this it just it just pasted into there and that makes it so that you can just regenerate these bindings and get you know all the new latest Raylib things with the new Raylib header you have uh, and also get these uh, hand-coded replacements of some things put in there so so I, yeah so I, so I removed these three so that you know there's no conflict with the, with a bound version and then it's re-implemented like this with this new bindgen 2.0 rewrite I took great care in trying to make the code easier to understand and and make it less well and make it easier to maintain also so the if you want to look into the source code of the generator uh, there is a main file which is sort of where the generator starts uh, and then there is a translate collect file which uses clang to go through the c headers and and build some sort of understanding of what's in there and then there's a translate process file that uses the stuff in the config to sort of modify the the, the stuff it found from clang a bit uh, and then there's also a translate macros file that does some voodoo magic uh, to to get the macros to like the yeah const it creates constants from from macros essentially uh, big thanks to sandaron who was the person who looked into the lib clang stuff initially and also uh, did sort of all the r d on how to uh, translate the macros and after it's done that it runs the, uh, the stuff in the output file which will output the odin file so it's sort of like this nice steps and you can see all the steps in in the main file if you open it uh, here you can see that it's sort of like 
uh, translate collect, translate process, and then there is another one somewhere here. Oh no, it's translate collect, translate macros, translate process, and then output. Uh, a last thing I want to show here is that uh, Nadaku has also made these uh, Jolt bindings. So there's a, a, a link this in the description of the video, but it's also linked in the uh, new release uh, of Bindgen here. And these bindings uh, for the Jolt physics engine use my binding generator. Uh, there was a version before of, of these bindings, but uh, like that used my binding generator, the 1.1 or 1.2 version. But that those bindings required some after the after the generation had run, it required some patch up with a script because my generator wasn't perfectly good for this task. But now actually it outputs the the bindings and it there just used as is. There is no more like post uh, generation patch up script. Uh, so you can look at this for a for an example also of how to make your bindgen config and stuff like that. Like I said at the start, it took me a month of full-time work to, to rewrite the generator. And if you find this useful, if you, if you like all the improvements that have happened now, I want to say thanks, then you can consider sponsoring me. The link to that is in the description. There is a GitHub sponsor page like this, uh, where you can, you can say thanks by gi giving me a coin for if you liked any of these open source Odin projects that I'm making. Anyways. Thanks a lot for watching, have a nice day and happy programming, bye bye.